Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here, popping in. You know, I want to talk to you about something that I see going on a lot right now, and especially with everything, you know, the messages in the music, the messages online, and I need to help you understand something. Now, see, what you have to realize when, when it comes to people online talking, a lot of times what you got to understand is you have two types. You have the one type who couldn't, really get anybody just because of the way the world treated them the way they looked and so they learned lessons from that space and then you have the type that could get everybody sleep with anybody and learn lessons from that space and but both sides understand each other because it's easy to see like I could look at a person and I could tell you their life story because the world treat us based on how we're seen in the world. So based on your looks, based on your demographic, where you live at, your height, your complexion, your weight, your nationality, your race, everybody knows that that's how we're treated based on those things. You don't see somebody who is, you don't see a guy who's 5'4", and a race that is discriminated against being treated the same as a guy who's 6'4 and muscular and the star of the football team being treated. They don't get equal treatment. They At the grocery store, at the restaurant, at the school, with the women, they don't get equal treatment. And so what we have to realize is that every person is a glass window. So I can't even really try to play you because if I try to play you, somebody could see right through me. So my best bet is to be authentic. It's just to be genuine. And even then, some people are going to misread uh, a person being genuine. But we all a glass window. So it's kind of like even with like salesmen. When you see salesmen and you see like the YouTube ads and you see the guys in front of the fancy cars or they on somebody water, they on somebody water on somebody boat, they done rent it and telling you about their life and that they got a laptop life and they could be around the world working. Everybody know they lying. But the person who buy the product want to get got. The person who buy the product just really want to get got. It ain't even about the salesman. It ain't even about the sales tactic. It's the person saying, I'm finna spend this money because it's gonna make me feel like I'm investing in myself even though I know nothing is gonna happen from this course that I'm about to take from this guy who got his laptop on a boat in the middle of the water. Get hit by a wave and now he done lost all his data. Laptop flipping the water. He ain't not great white and ate it. You see what I mean? You know that he lying. You, you see a guy standing in front of a car you know that the car rented or he just got it with a 25% interest rate and they about to call him in 28 days to take it back, tell him that the loan didn't actually finalize, but he got off all his videos. Everybody know that. We see through each other. That's why I want you to understand, you know, to the ladies, because I've been seeing this a lot, is you can't play a man. You can't really play a man. Like, a man knows it's kind of like when you saw uh black china had her boyfriend the woman had the boyfriend had a baby by the man the man they broke up the man went and got with the other um jenner uh kylie then that young lady, Black China, went and got with Rob. Now, at this time, Rob had been in hiding. So he had put on all kind of weight. He probably made himself believe that this woman wanted him. And so, in essence, he played himself. But if he really would have looked at it, and everybody else could see it, everybody in the world was like, that's not a real connection. Never ever. That's that's revenge. And everybody could see it. And I believe he could see it too. But he convinced himself, I'm going to just go through it because this companionship, this notoriety, this buzz, being back out there is better than nothing. Better than sitting in my room, depressed, just putting on weight. So let me go through this. And what you have to realize is that 
when women think they plan a man, because this is the thing, a lot of women today trying to become savages, trying to become players, and you only end up hurting yourself worse because you're not wired like that. You're not wired to be a savage. You're not wired to be a player. See, what you got to understand, this is why I try to help y'all realize, but it just, for some reason, it fall on deaf ears. You got to understand that what does a man do when he sign up in the army? Okay, what do they put in his hand? All right. When he become a ranger, uh, all this stuff, these different troops, and they send him to the other side of the world. When we was having issues with them, with, with the people over there on the other side of the world, and they kept boom, 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 every stuff going off in America, and they put that army together and they sent them over there. What they put in their hand? Okay, where they sit them at? Okay, on top of somebody's roof. And what do he got to do on that roof? What he looking through? This right here. What he doing? What it's doing? This is a human being that is sitting up there watching this thing travel, watching it go to this person's head. Picture that. And that's that's why I try to get women to understand. You got to understand what you're dealing with. And understand that you're wired totally different. Are you wired to watch somebody head explode over and over and over and over? Are you wired like that? No. So it does you no good to try to be a savage. See, when when your wiring get put in a position to where you watching somebody head explode. I remember I was playing college football and I was 170 pounds soaking wet. We we used to get a a, a, a a bowl before we had to weigh in. I used to get a bowl that was 32 ounce bowl and I fill it up with water and I drink the whole bowl right before I get on the scale to try to add a couple pounds to me. My teammate, he was 155 pounds soaking wet. Me and him was the fastest on the team. And he was he was a, a tenth of a second faster than me. He um he he used to tie a five pound weight around his scrotum. He put a string on the weight, tied it on the weight, tied it up around his scrotum, and, and would get on the scale with that five because we was trying to look heavier for our coaches because we cause we had weight goals we had to hit. And we were trying to get out of the breakfast club because you had to wake up 6 o'clock. I remember playing football and my freshman year, I redshirted. That mean that you just practiced that year, but you get to save your – you still got four years after that year. And so I'm in practice of going against the first-team defense. I'm 170 pounds. Our linebackers was 260 pounds, 90 pounds more than me. When On the squat rack, I used to squat probably – 400, 500 pounds. I really didn't do too much squats. The boy that was hitting me, the linebacker, was, he. I watched him squat 900 pounds. And that's the way he tackled. He was 260 pounds. When he come up, he would squat, he would lower his body, get all of his weight into his thighs, get all of it down there, and he would do that. He would explode. Blowed off the ground. He squat 900 pounds now. Do you understand the ventricular force of that? I don't even know that word now, but it need to go there. Ventriloquial force. All right. You know what I'm trying to say. Do you understand that kind of force? And imagine this my head. That weigh a little bit of pounds. Imagine a grown man, 260 pounds who squat 900 pounds going through my head with 260 pounds with the force, with enough force to lift a 900 pound weight and he hitting me right in my temple. I literally used to squeal and didn't even know it. I didn't even know I was squealing until one time he hit me 
and the defensive end came off the line and came up and ran and stepped on my thigh with his cleats. Stepped in my thigh and dug it in there. I said, stop squealing like a little bee. That's what he said to me. And then I replayed it in my head and I realized that when he hit me in my temple, I said, Ugh! <laughs> and he hit me so hard because I ran four touchdowns on them and I made them look stupid. I made them look silly because I'd be running. <laughs> I run four touchdowns in a row. And so the more I score, the harder the coach cursing them out and the harder they got to work. So when he got his hands on me and he only got his hands on me a few times now because I know what he was doing. But when he caught me, when I got tired and he caught me, he caught me good. And that's honestly why I went crazy. Because every day, this 260-pound man was in, exploding into my temple. That's I, It rewired my brain. You hear me? But that's what men do for a living. That's what men doing for fun. That's what men doing for fun. So this is what I try to get y'all to understand. Uh, watch, a box, watch a boxing match. Watch a boxing match. If you don't watch boxing, watch boxing. I remember one one woman, she told me, Tony, I do not know how you watch boxing. That thing is so vile. I could never watch boxing. That is so such a disgusting sport to see men just beating on each other. Watch boxing. And I'm going to tell you, as a grown man, I watch MMA. It, may, it turned my stomach. As a grown man. Now, my security guard, all my homeboys, my daddy, they love it. They love it. My security guard love MMA. I watch it. It turned my stomach. I'm like, I'm looking at these men and I'm like, you crazy. You literally crazy. You crazy. You in a cage and you letting another grown man hit you in your face with elbows, knees, feet. Front of his feet, back of his feet, fists. You crazy. You is crazy. But you see, this is what I try to get women to understand. It does you no good to try to adapt and be a man. Because that's wiring. That's hardwired. You can't beat a man at his game. You can't play a man at his game. What you have to do, this is what you got to realize. When the two of you play mind games, everybody loses. When you play mind games, everybody loses. So, women getting tired of getting played. In order to not get played, you got to get the game. You got to know the game. You got to be able to spot it. So you can remove yourself. It does you no good to anticipate the game and then say, you know what? I'm going to play this game because guess what? You could lose your life. Remember, you dealing with somebody who has either taken a life or tried to take a life. Nine out of 10 men. Now I ain't gonna say nine out of 10 men. Seven out of 10 men has taken a life or tried to take a life. And what I mean by trying to take a life, when a man get in a fight and he hit that other man, we trying to kill him. We ain't trying to just dehabilitate him. We ain't trying to just, you know, knock him. No. When a man hit another man, if you die, you die. If you die, you die. That's point blank period. That's what women don't understand about men. But see, now, nah, but see, this is what y'all think sexy. Y'all think a tough guy sexy. Mm -mm, he, your tough guy is crazy. And so what women want to do is you want to emulate. So many women trying to emulate the trauma of a man. So you say, okay, he could sleep around. I'm going to sleep around. That's stupid. Women say, oh, I'm going to just use him for his money. I'm going to just, I'm going to use him for his money. Go get your own money. 
Because while you think you using him for his money, he using you for your body. And guess what? He is not dumb because he's trained for war. Innately, he trained to hunt. How you think men ate? How you think men ate? It's extremely hard to catch a chicken. So what if you want you a hog? That wild boar could take your life with the, with the little horn. That wild boar could take your life. What you what else you want to eat? What what else you want to eat? Some cheetah. You, uh, ostrich is deadly. When I went to South Africa, they eat ostrich over there. They eat ostrich. I had my ostrich name was good. You hear me? But a ostrich can take your life. A man is wired to hunt. So when you think you playing him, he using you. And this is what he will do. He will go out and catch a disease and intentionally bring it back and give it to you. Because he could tell that you trying to use him for dinner dates. And to have your bills paid. He will put that life altering disease in you. He wired to hunt and kill. He wired this way. He got to know Christ in order to be renewed. This is what I need you to understand. So never, as a woman, never play mind games with a man. If you feel the need to play mind games, leave. Leave because there's a man that's for you. There's a man who has addressed his trauma. He's addressed his pain and he is prepared and he's ready for love. He has healed. Now, I'm going to tell you, when I was playing college football and I was going through that mental, that, that brain trauma every day, it changed me as a person. It changed me. Like I was just poor decisions, bad judgment, um, irrational behavior, just reckless behavior. It, 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 I was, oh, we, I was out there. You cut me off in traffic, I'm whipping out on you. I ain't talking about whipping out. I'm talking about whipping out on you. You cut me off. What you want? The day want to be, you want this to be your last date? Hey, I was out there reckless. You hear me? Just bad decisions, bad decisions, and I bl I blame it on that that brain trauma, just getting hit in the head every day. And but we don't talk about that. But that's what men doing. You you dating a football player? You dating a boss? You dating an MMA? You dating a soldier? Good luck, good luck. God bless you. God bless you. You finna have some problems on your hand. With just his judgment, it might not even be against you. Just his personal judgment in life. You're going to have to be prayed up. You're going to have to be ready. You're going to have to have discernment. You hear me? Olive oil. You hear me? Prayer cloths. Prayer closet. Prayer time. Holy Bible. King James Version. New, new International Version. Listen to me. You're going to have to be ready. All the way ready. But understand this. Don't understand this. Don't ever, don't ever try to beat a man at his game. Don't try to play a man's game because he's lost. See, when a man is a player, when a man is a grown boy, he lost. He's hurting. So why would you take an intelligent form, an intelligent being, and dumb yourself down to match the in intelligence level of a suppressed mental conundrum and emulate his behavior yo yeah i'm just throwing words in here that sound good right now but understand this why would you take your intelligent life form and reduce yourself to his level and operate at that level. That's dangerous. That is stupid. 
Let's just spell it all the way out. I need you to feel that in your stomach. That is stupid. And I know some of y'all want to, oh, when you're trying to reach people, you need to be gentle and you need to use scripture and you need to be loving. I'm, I'm lovingly telling you that is stupid. I'm telling you that with love. You hear me? Elevate. Never stoop to a man's level. Elevate. And if he won't elevate to your level, that's not your husband. Like, listen, my wife, she got a perfect love right now. My wife ain't got no tears. She ain't got no pain. She ain't got no worries. She ain't got to check my phone. She ain't got to check my email. She ain't got to follow me if I leave the house. She ain't got to worry about nothing. Her bills is paid. Her, her, all her needs, all her wants. She got it all. She don't have nothing. Listen, this is possible. This out here. But you know what she didn't do? She didn't stoop. Because she had an ex-boyfriend who cheated on her. Did she go start sleeping around because he's sleeping around? No, she left. She met me who was trying to be controlling. Did she get irate, start yelling, screaming, and cursing? No, she left. When when I got her married and I thought I had a trap because we was married and I still had a little grown boy in me and I wanted to go back to the streets and hustling, did she become Griselda Blanco, queen pen? No, she left. Kept her cool, calm, and collected. Kept her wits about herself. Never yelled at me. My wife never yelled at me. My wife has never cursed at me. Never slapped me in my face. Never punched me in my nose. Never slice my tires, never bust my windows, never bleach my clothes. Never, regardless of the things that I did, caught me in a lie, caught me on the Facebook inbox, you know, one time. Every, everything I did, I had to do it one time. She caught me one time. Never did it again. Because guess what? She showed me her bike walking out the door. If it was something serious. And so, left me one time in dating, left me one time in marriage point blank period but never stoop to my level never stoop to my level instead made me elevate to her level and this is what you got to realize in life you know a lot of women talking about they tired they tired that's life what you think Harriet Tubman was what you think the woman who, who sat down I was just listening to the story the other day the woman who sat down before Rosa Parks but she was 15 with a child out of wedlock, so the NAACP didn't want to align themselves with her, so they chose Rosa Parks because, you know, she older, better life, better situation, better image for the movement. And I was looking at that. What do you think that 15-year-old that girl who had a baby, single mother at 15, what do you think she felt? Everybody tired. What do you think we everybody feeling right now? What what, what you think... Black men feeling when every every day we look up and it's another one of us getting hung, literally hung by a noose or getting shot and killed unarmed by a police. Everybody tired. But see, success is when you go from, like the quote says, go from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. Everybody's tired. Everybody. You're not alone when you're tired of the games. Everybody's tired. Everybody's tired. See, a lot of times, too, the men playing the games because of the games being played with him. He playing the games because of the games being played with him because he can't even go get a house. Like, for example, I done bought vehicles, and this, this thing just blows me. I done bought vehicles that over a hundred thousand dollars and they'll let me come in now to a large dealership like a mercedes-benz dealership and get a vehicle i could get a hundred and seventy thousand dollar vehicle by putting down my income and putting down ten thousand dollars no bank statement verification no income verification credit could be bad Credit could be in the 500s and $10,000.
anybody in their life could save ten thousand dollars they'll let you get into a car which is a depreciating item as soon as you drive off the lot it lose 30 percent of its value they'll let you do that just like this but you go into a bank and say you want to purchase a a rental property an income generating rental property for one hundred sixty thousand dollars with ten thousand dollars down with, with credit score in the 500s, they're going to laugh you out that bank. So a lot of times, what you're not realizing too, the man is, he angry because he, he they playing games with him. So now, that trickles down to, to his woman. And then from the woman, it trickles down to the children. From the children, it trickles down into the next generation. So see, what happens is, the man has to be checked. The man got to be checked. The man got to hear from you, hey, I'm not the one you ought to be mad at. I'm not the one that you ought to be taking your pain and your trauma and your issues out on. I didn't do nothing to you. So let's get that clear. You're going to have to heal and you're going to have to grow if you want to be in my life. Because I refuse to be a test dummy. I refuse to be a punching bag. I refuse to be a bench player. I refuse. I'm the main star. I'm not no co-star. I'm the main star. I'm the headliner. I'm the one and only. And if that's not what you're here for, I'm out of here. You got to be able to talk to a man just like that. You got to be able to talk to him just like that. You can't be there and sorry excuse me oh sorry oh excuse me oh sorry oh sorry oh do you want me to cook you some eggs and bacon oh, here you go oh oh my goodness why did you do that oh no you can't be there like that no you can't and that's how women live in the day you walking on eggshells you you walking on eggshells you tiptoeing around a man you let him treat you like a punching bag. You let him, you know, treat you like an escort. And then, finally, one day you get fed up, and now you want revenge. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Just leave. Leave and let life take care of him. Let him go through the wrath for God. That'll knock him to his knees. He'll have to lick the gravel, get back up a better man. But let the natural occur. Don't don't interrupt his process. Don't become a reflection of him. Don't stoop to his level. Because you're not playing him. You're playing yourself. When you're with a man for money, you're playing yourself. Because now you are relinquishing your power. You're diminishing your value. When you could be out here getting to your bag, you could be out here earning seven figures a year, like several women are doing, but instead you focused on getting a, for, a free filet mignon with some asparagus to have that stinking pee in the morning. So, really? That's what you want to do? Is that what you want to do? Really? So you rather take pride in trying to play a man for dinner and your rent and your car note and, and want to pat yourself on the back saying, woo wee, woo. <laughs> yeah, girl, woo. I'm getting him for every dime he worth. These sorry, no good men. You want to treat us like that? Pay my rent. Pay my car note. Give me some shopping money for a Chanel bag. You look like a fool. Because he a fool. He broken. He lost. So now you talking about you want to get him for everything he worth. Now you just lost his heel. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? That's like, let me tell you what that's like. Let me tell you what that look like. That's like you 
working hard, being in your Mercedes Benz, pulling up to the light in your Mercedes Benz, okay? You at the light in your Mercedes Benz. Now here come Tom up to your window. Here come Tom up to your window. And then you take, roll down your window. How are you today, Tom? Oh, so let me, okay, so you're asking me for money. So you get to stand out here all day on the corner and get free money? Oh, really? So people just give you money? What's the most you've ever gotten? And then Tom said, well, well, one day, uh, Denzel, you know Denzel from the movie, A Time to Burn, Time to Kill? Denzel pulled up and gave me $1,000. What, Tom, you, Denzel gave you 1000 How much Jamie Foxx gave you? A hundred, what? Well, you know what, um, Tom, I'm going to turn this Mercedes Benz in. And I'm finna change my outfit and I'm gonna stand out here with you and just get free money all day. Cause instead of me working hard, I'm gonna stand out here with you and me and you could sleep under the bridge together on skid roll. And I'm gonna stay out here with you and get free money. You hear how that sound? Think about that now. Process that. I had to take you all the way through that. Process that. Process that. That's what you doing when you give up on love and relationships. And you want to get a man for all he worth. He already homeless spiritually, mentally, emotionally. You got everything to offer the world. You take two more steps past this no good, sorry man. And you could meet your husband. That's going to love you, cherish you, and respect you. But instead, you get weak and weary in well-doing. The Bible says don't be weary in well-doing. You get weary in well-doing. You give up on love. And you settle. Now you settle. Now you a whole. Now you a whole. You know what I'm talking about? You just on your bike for a man to be skiing in you. And you've settled for that position to be in fornication so you could get a free meal, so you could get your lights and your water paid when you could be out here thriving. You just surviving. And you telling yourself, oh, I'm playing the game. These men ain't no good. These men, sorry. So guess what? This man, sorry. He cheat. He's a cheater. You end up with him. You find out he a cheater. Instead of you leaving and saving yourself, you tell yourself, oh, you want to cheat? <laughs> I'm finna cheat on you because Tom want a piece of me. And I'm and woo, I'm finna put this thing on him. And it's women out here today that's going and revenge cheating. And guess what? Your boyfriend, your situationship is cheating, but did not catch a disease. You think you wanna be slick and play his game and beat him at his own game? You go cheat and kill. Catch a disease. Now, how is that for life? Woo, that is not fair. But guess what? It's happening every day. It's happening every day. Because guess what? It's just like in a game. It's just like in a basketball game. Any kind of game. I played basketball and football growing up. And you'll go... Somebody, boom, whistle blow, somebody hit you. Pop! You get mad. What? The ref see the second person, not the first. The ref see the second person. I'm sports from like Connie. Man, what you mean? He hit me. He hit me first. What you talking about? Man, y'all cheat. Man, y'all cheat. He hit me. Nope. All I saw was you, sir. All I saw was you. If he hit you, get him back on the next play when it's legal. You hit him back, you get a flag. 15 yard penalty. That's the same thing happened in life. Somebody do something to you, you go to try to do it back, you get caught. You the one get caught. You pay the price. 
So the thing is, man and woman, this go both ways because men get cheated on too first. Men get cheated on first too because this woman is became a savage. It became a low life because of her ex-boyfriends that she done dealt with. Because of the men who stole her innocence. Because of the men who violated her. She became a savage. Now she living lowly. Not lowly like in humility, but she living as a low life because she says, I'm dejected, I'm broken, I'm tired. I'm just going to play the game that the men playing because I'm tired of being the bigger person. I'm tired of walking away with my strength and my dignity because all my strength and dignity have been stripped from me because I gave him the right to take my strength and dignity because of the actions that he did. So here, keep my strength and dignity and I'm just going to be a savage now. So guess what? She go and cheat on the man. She cheat on her next man. He ain't did nothing to her. This man could have been her husband. This man could have been her saving grace. This man could have been her healing. But because she gave up and she started to play the game and became savage hearted. Now she done spit on the face of her blessing because she was not ready and prepared. See, that's why the Bible tell you to turn the other cheek. See, it ain't talking about be a punk. It ain't talking about be scared. It ain't talking about let somebody just sit there and just beat on you all day every day. What what they really what turn the other cheek mean is don't become a reflection of the person you dealing with. Be the bigger person. Go on about your life. Go on about your life because your blessing, your healing is on the way. So you can't ever give up. You can't get weary in well doing. You abstinent and every man you meet leave you once he figure out he can't sleep with you after he done tried you 10 times and you done said no every time told him you're not ready for that. That's not what you own. And then he leave you. You can't get weary and then up on the bike, up on the bike, up. Guess what? It's a lot of women who in this world have been abstinent and after getting left, by three, four men in a row, slept with the next man, and then caught a life-altering STD, an incurable STD. This is real, this is true story. This happening every day. It's women who have been a virgin, countless women who were virgins, and then got weary because societal pressure telling her that she ain't grown. Every woman doing it. No man will be with you. No man will wait on you and marry you if you're a virgin. Lose. It's women who lost their virginity. And upon losing their virginity called an incurable STD. Is it fair? Don't sound fair. Is it life? Yes. You know why? You know why it's life? It's what the Bible talk about. When, when the Bible talk about it and they say, listen, you better off not knowing God than to know God and still be in willing sin. Bible talking about you better off tying a weight around your neck and casting yourself into the deep of the ocean than to know God and still be in willing sin. See, the reason why we pay a major price. It's like when I try to hit the mega million. When I try to do me a scratch off. I never ever won anything on that. Because I know better. Because I know it's gambling. Because I know it's wrong. Those winnings is for the people who don't know better. It's for the people who don't really walk with God. Trust in God. Believe in God. That's who's supposed to. That's who win in the casino. Because. They don't know better. God ain't going to let me come up like that. Because he done gave me what it take to get it off the muscle, to get it out the mud. Walking by faith with actions. God done gave me what it take to be able to earn any amount of money I want to earn. So he ain't going to let me take a shortcut and be rewarded. Many are called, few are chosen. So what you got to realize is that if you here today and you listening to this video, that's because you chosen. Because this the chosen circle right here. It's the chosen circle because I'm not operating on my own strength. I'm not operating on my own wisdom. I'm working for the Lord. So if you here, even if you are atheist, guess what? You in the chosen circle. This is God's work. This ain't what I want to be doing. I could be doing anything else right now. 
I, it's so much else I could be doing right now, but I'm on here talking to you. So let me help you understand. Our paths cross for a reason, and that's because you in the chosen circle, meaning that you are chosen to live a life of integrity. You are chosen to live a life of strength, of peace, of wisdom, of clarity, of blessings. Even if you got to do it alone, be happy single. Be happy single. Look at what Oprah creating and ain't married. Yeah, she got Stepman over there every now and then, but we don't know what Stepman got going on. But look at what you could create. You Come on, be happy single. Get on your grind. Start your for-profit company. Start your not-for-profit company. Start your clothing line. Write your book. Become a life coach. Feed your mind. Read your books. Write your books. Tutor. Open up your bookstore. The rent at the little at the little store downtown right there ain't nothing but eight hundred dollars a month. Open up your bookstore. Open up your internet cafe. Open up your tutoring system. Your tutoring uh, space. Your school teacher. Open up your tutoring space. Leave leave work as a teacher, then go in there and you got seniors tutoring the fifth graders, and the parents paying for this to get the tutoring, or or you raising money from the rich people in your city. For your nonprofit, and that's what your nonprofit doing. Create. Don't just survive, thrive. Don't just exist, live. You learn you learn by sniffing up a man booty. You learn about how you could get over on a man, how you could get back on a man, how you could get free dinner dates, how you could get your rent paid, how you get your car note paid, how you get your new bag. You learn about the wrong thing. You learn about the wrong thing when you could be out here a millionaire. You could be a millionaire and you out here sniffing behind the boot of a man. Come on, I. Come on, I. You out here trying to listen to these Jezebel spirits on YouTube tell you how to get everything you can out of man. That is foolishness. That's foolishness. It, you need to be listening to somebody trying to tell you how to get everything you could get out of you. Everything you could get out of your potential. You can't get nothing out of man. You can't get, ain't nothing. In, if he empty, he empty. That money that he's spending on you don't mean nothing. That money going to turn the shrapnel and knives in your spirit. That money going to turn the thorns. That money going to turn the shackles. You know why? Because that man is not no fool. When you think you playing with that man, you playing with your life, sister. Do you hear me? You playing with your life. You will come up missing. You will come up missing. A man ain't nothing to be played with. It's the same person that's on somebody's roof blowing somebody's brain out. It's the same person that's in the woods shooting innocent deers for fun. Shooting innocent deer for fun. It's the same person that's in a cage, elbowing and being elbowed by another grown, stinking, musty man. They wrapping up on the floor, choking each other, all kind of scrotum in each other's face, all kind of sweat dripping down each other's body, tasting the blood. Of another man. Listen to what I'm telling you. That you're dealing with. <laughs> and that's what you want to try to play with. Sister you will come up missing. You will be burning. Like every corner of Satan house. In your drawers. That man will put every recompense. In your spirit that he can. The moment he realized. That you done stoop. To the level of savagery because you thought he was a savage you if he cheated on you and then you want to cheat back guess what now nah, it's all out war and that's not what you want keep your class keep your integrity and move on this is the same thing to the men if you a man and you meet a woman and she living like a low life and she a savage just like a low life man a savage man if this woman has become that and she cheat on you, go about your business. 
Don't put hands on them. Don't, don't try to revenge cheat. Go on about your business. Save yourself. Don't save them. And you don't want to be saved. Don't save them. Come on now. You can't be captain. Save them. Go on about your business. Male, male or female. Man or woman. Go on about your business. What that mean is move on with your life. Lady talking about when Tony say go on about your business, what that mean? I said, Lord, you don't know what going about your business mean? That mean move on with your life. Block their phone number. Block them on Instagram, Facebook. Block their mama. No, you can't call me talking about your sorry son. No, don't call me talking about your sorry daughter. I'm gone. I'm up out of here. Cause you should have been, cause you should have raised them right. If you would have raised them right, you wouldn't have to be calling me, begging me to come get back with them. You should have raised them right. You blocked. Go on about your business. You hear me? And don't get weary and well doing. You got to look within, and you got to get better. Now I got to get off of here, cause my back's starting to radiate up my spine, cause you know I had a herniated disc. I fell off a skateboard one time in the house trying to show my son how to ollie. Skateboard went from up under my went in that out by eight feet came down hit that wood flow My bike ain't been the same since and then yesterday. I went outside and played two-on-one soccer versus my sons My oldest son 13 and he really know how to play soccer So it, it wore me out and, and right now I'm sitting down but it back on the radiate you hear me the nerve I got to go get some therapy on the bike So I'm about to, have to cut this video short But what I need you to get and understand on this right here what I need you to get and understand. Now, I appreciate the commercial that showed up on here now. I appreciate that. Because when you hear a commercial, get that time to just breathe. Use that time to breathe. Where you could just breathe and process the last three sentences that you heard me say. You, you get, Your brain can't even listen to a message straight through. People keep talking about, I need to listen to the message straight through. Your brain can't even work like that. You need time to process. So use that commercial break as time to process the last three sentences that you just heard. Appreciate it. See, that's what I mean by you got to find the good in everything. Then this is what you got to do. You tired of men being dogs? Learn how to train dogs. I don't mean that literally, but what I mean is when you get this knowledge and you can recognize a dog, I'm gone. You see what I'm saying? Don't try to become a dog. When you meet a dog, don't, what do you do? You meet a dog, you become a dog? No, you learn how to train a dog. You learn how to walk the dog. Yeah, or the dog barking, you learn how to keep on going. When you walk down the street and dog barking at you, do you sit there and get on all four and start barking back at the dog? They ain't your dog, you keep going. You meet a man and he a dog, that ain't your dog, keep going. Whenever you find out that ain't your dog, keep going. And when you find out this man is a dog, keep going. That ain't your dog. You got your you got your Maltese. You already got your little Shizu. You already got your pit bull, French bulldog. You don't need another dog. When you realize he a dog, go about your business. I got a client who she's single. She's single. And you know what? And you know what she's doing? Let me tell you about my client. I ain't, and I don't, I don't ever say names. My client's single. And she bring the table to the table. You hear me? She got a corporate job. And she bring the table to the table. Make good money. I think she in her 50s. And you know what she doing? When we talk on the phone, when we on her coach session, she ain't crying about no man. She ain't crying about no man. You know what she just doing? She, she opened up a franchise. She opened up a franchise in her city. Opened up a franchise store. And then open up another business with Amazon. Open up two businesses at the same time. You know why? Because her kid's grown and she got time. So instead of sitting crying by the man trying to figure out how she could get a free dinner date, she bought the shelf. She owned the kitchen. She owned the table. Cut me my steak and lobster. Thank you, please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Meet them well. Thank you. You see what I'm saying? You got to shift your mindset. Don't go into no peasant begging mindset. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I'm finna be so sexy. 
I'm finna have these no good men. Get this here bag. I'm finna buy my own bag to make him think I got money. And I'm gonna have him buy me more bags. Ah, <sighs> uh, yes. Um, I would like for Lat McNon and Cheddar Cheese Mac and Cheese. And so now, here you is. You trying to become so sex and seductor like a Jezebel because you listening to Jezebels give you terrible advice about how to get all you could get out of man. And then now you sitting down with the enemy, with this sorry, no good man, and all you want is a meal. And then you want some loving. You want penetration, which is a soul tie, which probably shooting a disease down the pike right up into your system that's going to sit there and brew in in multiply bacteria and gonna change your life from the inside out forever then you want your rent paid and your car note paid guess what when you get complacent you get replaced what i mean by that is by life in life general you get replaced see when you get complacent and you saying let me get a meal let me get a house let me get a car let me get what i could get from this man guess what you just relinquish your purpose you just gave up your space in the world all because you want to be angry with men. Anger does not serve you because you want to be frustrated and angry with men. Let me take my bag off. Angry and frustrated with men. Anger does not serve you. It's hurting you. It's hindering you because you want to compete. Queens don't compete. Kings don't compete. You want to compete with this man to see who got the most gain, who could get the most out of who. You wasting your life away. Pick yourself up. Love yourself. Move on with your life. Be happy by yourself. If men ain't no good, then that means you don't need a man. It makes no sense to say, oh, men ain't no good, so I'm going to get everything I can. If they ain't no good, then you don't need nothing from them. Why you want somebody, why you want something from somebody who ain't no good? Because somebody who ain't no good ain't going to bring you nothing but damage and curses and problems. So you'd be better off by yourself. So what sense does it make to be hollering about men savages, men sorry, men dogs, so I'm going to be a dog? Listen, you hurting yourself. You ain't hurting nobody else. You hurting yourself because he already wallowing in savagery he already sorry he already got a no good heart so he oh he already greedy so see sometimes i'm gonna tell you what happened sometimes you have a woman who is decently attractive and in chasing what she wanted she got hurt she got cheated on time and time again she never realized the role she played in it. She never realized that he was testing her and she was failing every test. She never realized that because she wanted the game to be fair and even. And there's no rules in love and war. You got to have the rules. You got to know who you are. There are no rules. You can't, you can't go out into the dating world and expect somebody else's child who was raised in a whole nother household, whole nother city, whole nother environment to come and play by your rules. You got to have your own rules. You got to have your own bylaws. You got to know who you are. So what happened is this decently, decent looking woman was chasing after her preferences. Her preferences were not rooted in character and integrity. So she kept getting played. So you get cheated on by this man, cheated on by that man, cheated on and beat on by this man, beat on by this man, verbally abused by this man, emotionally abused by this man, physically abused by this man. So now you're going through all this. So then she say, you know what? These men, sorry. Every man I meet, sorry. Never thought that you need to get new knowledge. You need to learn. Instead of keep getting on your bike, take some time and learn what a real man looks like. And realize that you chasing pipe dreams, you chasing fantasies, you chasing your preferences. 
instead of understanding what standards are and what character is and what integrity is, you can avoid all those problems. Instead of listening to the truth and getting depressed, you ought to be listening to this and getting happy. Women keep talking about the more I listen to, the more I want to stay single. No, that's the more confident you ought to be to know that you can read the signs, that you can recognize the red flag. So what this woman does is, she this is what women be doing. Women be getting cheated on by the man they want. Then they go get with the man they don't want and take their pain out on him. And then that, then that man is what we have today in the MGTOW and the red pill. It's that man. It's the man. Now see, this is the thing. He still got what he deserved because he was dating with his little head. See, looks are compatible. So it's certain looks that go with certain looks. Everybody know that, but people don't want to accept that. So I got a certain level. It's a certain look that's not compatible with me. It's a certain style, certain race, certain skin complexion, certain height that's not compatible with me. But see, a lot of times men see that woman as out of reach and see that woman as exotic, see that woman as special and say, okay, let me go get her. And he goes and he shoots his shot. And then he get a chance with her. He wants her for his ego. He wants her for a notch in the belt. He chose her with the little head, not the big head. He chose her with the little head. What he didn't realize is that she's been dating on her compatibility scale. She And she's been getting dogged out. So now she's a savage. She's upset and she says, I'm going to get everything I can get out of men. And she may be beautiful. She may be pretty. So now she starts to date men to get what she wants. And all she is doing is perpetuating the cycle and making the, making the dating scene worse. All she's doing is making it worse because when she get this little man, who she sees as a little ugly. She sees him as a little ugly. And this one message to y'all men. If you just see yourself as ugly, okay? And get the woman that you know is truly there for you. If you know this woman giving you a chance and you look at her ex-boyfriends and all her ex-boyfriends is six four, muscular, and here you is five four. And you don't have a six pack, you got a keg, and you see all her men is, you know, this here color, and then you coming in here, this here color, that's not your type. Point blank period. I know y'all want y'all, oh, love it blind, love it blind, love got all the eye, I love got eyes in the back of his head. Love ain't blind. All her men look like this here. Washboard abs, okay, uh. This here color, and you come in here like this. No, no, you come in here like this. You this color. You this color, 1201 AM, and this how you built. And this what she used to. This what she been trying to get, and this who's been dogging out. Then she come to you, listen here, play, but she do not want you. She do not want you. You got to want the woman who wants you. It might be this woman, okay? It might be this woman. But you know what you done been with. It might be this woman. You know what you'd have been with. So just keep doing what you've been doing. Don't get greedy. Me, Ooh, yeah, I like that one here. Okay, olive skin, green hair, accent, long, not green hair, green eye, accent, mm, finna get them. And then guess what? You get played. And then now, this is why we got MGTOW. This is why we got the red pill. Because a perpetuating cycle. The woman got hurt, dating who she wanted. Now she come get this man that she thinks is a little ugly. He might not, he might be tall, dark, and handsome to the woman that's five foot and he five six. He tall, dark, and handsome. But to the woman that want a man that's six four, he look ugly. He looks challenged. She got hurt. She come hurt him. Now he come and he now he wanna hurt everything. Now he hurt every woman he get. That's on his level. When you play mind games. 
everybody loses. Let me repeat that for you. That's my original quote. When you play mind games, everybody loses. Listen to me. If you got this far, put be blessed in the comments. I ain't called to go over an hour yet. God bless you. We'll talk soon.